In my conversations with leaders of the Eretz Hadashah party, they noted that it had been shut out of news coverage by most of the major Israeli media. Now I know why, at least in the case of one TV channel. Labor Party chief Shelly Yachimovich made a deal with Channel 2's Rina Matzliach. In return for the latter agreeing not to report on the party, Eretz Hadashah that is, Yachimovich would offer her exclusive leaks. What makes this an even dirtier deal than what I've outlined above is that Matzliach said on the air recently that the real reason she didn't cover Eretz Hadashah was that she found its leader, Eldad Yaniv, not trustworthy. Hell, if you use that rule to determine which party leaders got coverage in Israel, you wouldn't cover anyone. Her claim was disingenuous, so much so that the NGO Lada'at filed a formal press complaint against Matzliach. Now we know that interview was a real smokescreen, and the real reason Matzliach shut out the party was a good old-fashioned backroom deal. In business, it would be called restraint of trade, and both of them would be hauled in for questioning. In media and politics, business as usual. In case anyone out there doubts this story, here are two of the exclusive Yachimovich gave, gave Matzliach. In one, Yachimovich was the secret source who revealed that General Uri Sagi had joined Labor's campaign as a Knesset candidate and its senior security expert. The second story conveyed a juicy scoop that Sagi was resigning because a woman had accused him of harassing her while they both served in the IDF many years before. The latter story was reported not by Matzliach, but by Amit Segal so as to cover Yachimovich's tracks and divert anyone attempting to trace the source of the stories. Thanks to a senior, uh, senior source inside the Labor Party, we don't need to know the source. We know it. After I first published this story in Tikkun Olam, Amit Segal tweeted calling me a lying fantasist without offering any rebuttal of my story. In fact, he appears not to have read my post at all, because he claims that I said he was party to the deal along with Matzliach and Yachimovich, which isn't what I wrote at all. Those charges of lying coming from Segal are rich since his employer, Channel 2, was forced to settle a libel suit brought against him by Hebrew University professor Amiram Goldblum, in which the station paid the victim for the damage to his reputation. I also note that as far as I know, Rina Matzliach has made no comment on my charges. I've already reported in my blog that at least one competing party originated bogus SMS messages to voters telling them polls showed Eretz Hadashah wasn't going to pass the electoral threshold and that they shouldn't waste their vote. Now we know the fix was in and everything was bogus. The Labor Party is the same as any other party, willing to use any and all tricks in the book to suppress votes for competitors. Yachimovich made a pretense of representing real change as she embraced the social justice movement that had filled the streets of Tel Aviv with demonstrators two summers before. She was supposed to be a breath of fresh air. There is indeed a smell emanating from Yachimovich's leadership of the campaign and the party, but it isn't the smell of fresh air. It's the smell of dirty tricks and politics as usual. Some of this may be why Labor's polling fell as the campaign continued. From a high of 20 seats, it declined till it actually won only 15. A distinct disappointment for all those who hoped for a resurgence of the party. This story certainly won't burnish Yachimovich's leadership of the election campaign or party in general. Haaretz and Israeli TV also report that Yachimovich is purging labor of its members who tweeted or published Facebook statuses which were favorable to other parties. They're actually going to the trouble of hunting down such individuals and writing them former le formal letters, drumming them out of the party. This is petty tyranny, the conduct of the old Stalinist NKVD, and not a modern political party. A few of my readers were dubious about my claims of fraud and manipulation of the political process to subvert the electoral chances of Eretz Hadashah. Maybe they'll want to reevaluate that judgment now. There may be legitimate criticisms of Eretz Hadashah and its leaders. 
I'm making no judgment on this issue, since some I know have expressed such views about the party. But the place for those criticisms and that debate about the party is in public forums and in the media, precisely where they didn't happen during this election cycle. Collusion by Matzliach and Yachimovich cheapens what little is left of Israeli democracy. In this case, a reporter and politician have engaged in an unholy pact to advance their own interests at the expense of the overall political system. This is Richard Silverstein. Thanks for listening.